Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm painting up the Knight Arcanum from the Dominion box set. Now, I assembled the whole thing pretty simply, but it has two pegs on its feet that's going to go into the pre-made base. And so I just sand these down because when they're primed and painted and stuff, they're going to get super thick and they're not going to fit. So this is me just getting ahead of the curve. I go to prime it. I'm going to use general purpose gray parp car primer from Bright Touch. And after priming it, I notice this giant crack on the, uh, whatchamacallit, on their cloak, and I thought it would fill up. So I use Milliput, and then I try to sand it off, but there's an icon at the bottom of this crack, and if I don't sand it enough, the icon will disappear into the Milliput. But if I sand too little, it's like, is this balance? I went heavy, and I basically sanded all the Milliput away until there was just enough filling the crack. So then I reprimed it again that spot and it wasn't enough. Eh, is is a difficult judgment call. I probably should have sanded as much around the robe and less around the icon. Oh well. And now for the undercoating process with this time Magos purple. Palette Witch Flush and White Scar, we're going to do the undercoats. First, I'm going to use Magos Purple with an airbrush and do the undersides. And this works much better than Drucci Violet. It still has a bit of dotting uh, when it comes out of the airbrush, but it's way less than the Drucci Violet. And then we will use Palette Witch Flush through the airbrush at a upper angle, like 45 degrees pointing down on the model. And then we will take White Scar and we will dry brush on the most raised areas and stuff to pick out the details. And now on to the cape, which we're going to try something new again. We're going to go with Hoeth Blue, Cantor Blue, and a lot of Lamy and Medium. And so what we're going to do is with all the robes, the outside is blue. So we're going to start off with the bright color Hoeth Blue. And then we're going to go with a mix of like about five to six parts Lamy and one small part uh, Cantor, or even less. Maybe well, very little. We just want to turn into a wash, and we're going to apply it all over. And we apply it a few times till it gets well into the recesses. Uh, we can use a hair dryer to help speed up the process. And then we're going to take Hoeth Blue and mix it one to one or one parts Hoeth or two parts Lamian. It depends. Less, uh, less Hoeth is usually better. And we're just going to repaint the highlights. Well, the thing is, because it is diluted so much, we're going to have to do this multiple times. But they dry quickly with the hairbrush and stuff, with the ha hair dryer and stuff like that. So, I mean, this is a just you're painting over the same area again and again until it lightens up to the point you like and so eh, it's okay and now with Ulthuan gray and pallid witch flesh we're gonna paint the inside of the cloaks or the white part so we're gonna start with Ulthuan gray as a base coat we're gonna have to do two layers of this and then we will apply a final layer of Pallid Witch Flesh on the parts of the cloak that are closer towards the light, or the giant open planes towards the light. So now we're going to paint the scrolls that are on her waist. So we're going to start off with Iron Breaker, Hobgrot, Hive, Sandry Dust, Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet. So what we're going to do, start off with Iron Breaker and just paint the metal parts, which is the top and bottom, I guess like seals or protectors or whatever. Then we're going to paint all the, well, scroll with Hobgrot Hive. Then we're going to take Sandry Dust, dilute it a bit with Lamy and Medium, and then apply it. We can apply a few coats of this, I believe it's one to one, until like the most pronounced areas are lighter. And once it's done, we're going to take Corn Red and we're going to apply it onto the wax seals themselves. Then we're going to take Mephiston Red and we're basically going to cover 90% of the seals, which is a little hard to do because they're so small, so you're going to need a fine brush. The outer circle and a dot in the center. And then with Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to apply it to the top crescent of each seal and a tiny dot in the center if you are able to. Alright, with Thondia Brown and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint that book. We're going to start off with a base layer of Thondia Brown onto the center part of the book and towards the back where it touches the cloak. And then we're going to do a two parts Thondia to one part Evil Sun Scarlet. We just want to get a darker brownish red. 
and then we're just going to paint the rest of the book with it. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast, Usha, 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 this bone color and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint the pages of the book and do some highlighting. So with Ushtabi Bone, we're going to paint the pages of the book, as well as a slight highlight onto the scrolls, this most raised area of the scrolls. And then with the one-to-one -one mix of Skeleton Horde and Lamian Medium, we're going to apply it to the books and a little bit into the scrolls so that the fold over is more darker, so the effects on the scrolls is more pronounced. And then I do a quick fix with Evil Sun Scarlet and paint strips right onto this like little string rope thing that's holding the book together. And now with Liquitex Acrylic Ink Transparent Burnt Sienna mixed one to one with Air Rune Fang Steel, we then apply this to all the gold. And now with Liquitex Acrylic Ink Transparent Raw Sienna, Carbon Black, and Runefang Steel Air, we're going to mix one-to-one -one with the Raw Sienna and Runefang Steel, and then we're going to take from the Carbon Black on a separate spot and mix it in. However, I mixed it in a little too much, and it made it look like a dark green, but this was more of a burnished metal, and I applied it to all the handles of the sword on her waist and her staff. And now with a one-to-one -one mix of Cerulean Blue Hue from Liquitex Acrylic Ink and Runefang Steel Air, we then apply it onto the shoulder pads. If I had a darker blue, then I would, but this is the only blue I could find. And with Rhinox Hide, I apply this to the leather straps on the legs, arms, and the belt. So now we're going to try something. With the transparent raw sienna and pyrrol red with Ulthuang Grey Air, I mix together something and I make a pink fleshy color. The problem is this is mostly due to the Ulthuang Grey and not really the inks. Well, the inks bring the color out, but the thing is it's too thick because normally when it's one to one, uh, one part to this air color and one part the inks, they flow, they break apart uh, on the model, they highlight and do all the shading and all that stuff in one pass. The issue though is because too much Ulthuang Grey is mixed in is too thick and so the inks can't really do their thing. So I got a really nice pink color from this and it's sort of highlighted but it's very subtle. It's like you have to look at it and it's like, oh yeah, you'll see it there, but you won't be able to spot it from a distance. So maybe some Lamy and Medium mixed in would have made it flow better. Alright, with Dawnstone and the Ulthuang Grey Air, because the Air version doesn't have all the lumps in it, I paint the face mask. Now I forgot half the footage, so I used Dawnstone and I applied all over the face. And then while I'm painting it with Ulthuang Grey, which still needs a little bit of water, by the way, I only paint half the mask because I was painting half and I thought, you know what, it looks cool, so I'm just going to paint half the mask with Ulthuang Grey. And now with Ulthuan Grey Air and Cerulean Blue Hue from Liquitex, we're going to mix it one to one and we're going to paint the orb on the staff and the little bottle that's on her waist. And what we're going to do is we're going to add more Ulthuan Grey into the mix as time goes on and then we're just going to use this to highlight. We'll do one base layer, then we'll do a mid layer, and then we'll do a, a highlight, adding more Ulthuan Grey in. Just have fun with it.
And then with Fondia Brown, I retouch up these ropes that are on the bottle as well as these leather straps that are on the scrolls that I missed. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, I paint the ribbon coming out of her side, as well as I don't show it the two shoulder pad icons that she has. And now with Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint the gems that are scattered throughout. So I just take a bit of Mephiston Red and just apply it to the gem. There's like one on her forehead, chest, sword, uh, I think there might be one elsewhere but I can't recall. And then with Evil Sun Scarlet, we just apply a touch, a dot, onto each gem. And now with Mineral Spirits and Winter Newton's Burnt Umber, I make a oil wash. I try to make it thicker, not super thick, but I'm trying to increase the thickness because I want to paint it directly into the recesses. It's still too thin. I'm close to just making a sludge and just apply it on, but that'll be for another project. And then once I applied it and it has dried, I then use a, uh, I, was it? I take some scissors and cut a piece of a sponge off and then I just clean it up with this. And then with Liberator Gold, we apply this to the most raised areas, the edges, and most raised areas. Not really a lot, because the gold work that we did before really did a lot of good with highlighting and depth and stuff, and really like went around the curves of her armor and stuff, so it turned out well. So we'll just use this to highlight the most raised and most pronounced areas. And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're going to seal in the most important stuff. And for some reason, I do not have the footage. And if I go to my iCloud and I find out that video was there that didn't appear when I was compiling this and making this video, I'm going to be pissed. But I used AK Interactive on all the cloth, scrolls, the soft stuff basically, and the base because it did have an oil wash and the oil wash creates a very shine, a very huge shine to it so I wanted to make sure that's gone. And then with the gloss varnish I then applied it to the glass, the bottle, the orb, and the staff, and the gems assorted throughout. And done. Uh, a simple basic model has some uniqueness to her. Uh, I wanted the mask thing because I thought it'd be more interesting and distinct than just generic female head. And I made it more interesting with the... Well, the way I painted it. Overall... Hmm... Uh, <coughs> I feel a 7 out of 10 overall. I tried a different thing with the... With the cloak and... Uh, it was more laborious. I made it work in the end. I didn't have to use the airbrush to fix some things, and I could have taped up the rest. But this was a more, this was a different way. Um, yeah, overall the model turned out well. The base turned out well. Uh, it's fine. It's a good model. Uh, learned some stuff. Got to practice some stuff. Uh, a lot of interesting things. I will give it that. I will give it that. It's been very interesting to experiment with all these different models well my next vid is going to be my last dominion vid probably i know i still have some of the cruel boys to paint but eh, whatever uh i'll add it to my pile of shame and get it done down the road it's just there is so much i have to do i still have the beast nag as a commission that has been the owner has been very uh patient with me on getting it done and all that stuff but i gotta just get it done because the black templars are coming out uh honestly like, I know a lot of people are, uh, like, mad at GW and stuff right now, but honestly, if you people just paint your pile of shame, and in 10 years after you finally finish that, GW might have changed their policies. <laughs> <laughs> 
which is probably going to be everything I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be finishing off my pile of shame, which is pretty large. All right. Well, like the video if you like the video. Uh, share it if you want to share it. Dislike it if you want to dislike it. And I'll be back soon.